What's going on guys? It's Michael and today I'm going to be giving you my top 10 most anticipated movies of 2023. Before we start off with the list, I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope all of you had a wonderful holiday season and uh, I've been meaning to do some videos recently with The Whale, Babylon, and Puss in Boots The Last Wish, but due to Christmas holiday activities and all that stuff and me just getting back from my Orlando vacation, I've had to I've had to like cancel all those projects just because I didn't really have a whole lot of time to do them. But this is the first video of 2023 where I'll be discussing my most anticipated movies of the entire year. And this will be and this will be the first of many videos for the entirety of 2023. So without a further ado, let's get into it. Now, just looking at the calendar this year, uh, I believe that 2023 is going to be one of the biggest years in cinema history. We got returning franchises remakes, and even some originals as well. There's going to be something for everybody this year, and I am more than excited to experience these movies on the big screen. To be completely honest with you, this was a really hard list for me to make. I made this list all the way back in like July of 2022, and ever since then, a lot of movies have moved up and a lot of movies have moved down. It's just, it's been a little bit difficult just because I'm so excited for all these movies I'll be talking about today. So some of them will be a little bit lower than others, but other than that, I believe that 2023 is going to be a great, a great year for movies. And without further ado, let's start off with the honorable mentions. The first movie of my honorable mentions is the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now, ever since I was a kid, I have loved the Mario franchise. It is, it is, this is the reason why I got into gaming in the first place. I pretty much played like every single game in the franchise. There's, there may be a few I missed, but this is a franchise I grew up with and based on the trailers and everything I heard about the movie, I think it looks, I think it looks incredible just based on the animation and what the animators did. Like you could tell that so much care and effort was put into creating the Mushroom Kingdom into film. And I believe it's going to be one of the better video game movies like ever, honestly, like we got the, the Sonic movies previously and they, they've been like really solid movies. And they, I think they've broken the video game curse in a lot of ways. Um, on the on the contrary, um, uh, Illumination, who's doing this movie, kind of has a dodgy tr track record. So I'm keeping my expectations a little bit like in the in the middle. And uh, I'm still trying to get used to Chris Pratt Pratt's voice as Mario. It's still, uh... but yeah, sorry about that. It was just starting to get really windy outside. But despite uh, a little bit of concerns with like the studio track record and Chris Pratt's voice. I'm still really looking forward to seeing this movie and I believe it's going to be one of the video game movies like ever honestly. So so hope I'm hoping for the best with this one. Next one up on my honorable mentions is Barbie from director Greta Gerwig and writer Noah Bobach and it stars Ryan Gosling as Ken and Margot Robbie as Barbie. Like that is a solid lineup. If you were to tell me that I'd be putting a Barbie movie on this list, let alone the honorable mentions, like let's say two or three years ago, I would have told you that you were crazy. But here we are. Not only with this, not only do we have a studded cast, but we also have a solid writer and director that is helming the movie. And based on what I've seen from the teaser trailer, I think it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Like I think it, I think it's going to be one of those movies that it's going to be like, don't judge a book like. Don't judge a book from its cover, kind of similar to the Lego movie. So I'm looking forward to that. And it's also coming out the same day for another movie on, that is going to be on the top 10 list, which I will get into later. So so those were my honorable mentions. Now let's get into the top 10. Starting off at number 10, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which I feel like it's a given that an MCU movie or two will make it to this list. But I'm really looking forward to this one for a couple reasons. I really enjoy the Ant-Man movies. Uh, eat, heck, even Ant-Man and the Wasp, which Twitter hates. And I love Paul Rudd as the character. I think he's funny, he's charismatic, and based on what we've seen from this trailer, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of the Quantum Realm, which hasn't really been featured in the MCU, just kind of briefly mentioned and even seen a little bit in the past two Ant-Man movies and even Avengers Endgame with, with the whole time travel plot. So I think it's going to be really cool to see the Quantum Realm in its full, as, uh, as its full universe and glory in this movie. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Jonathan Majors as Kang. We've seen him before in Loki. I, I thought he was really good in. And with, with this villain, I think Jonathan Majors has the potential to play one of the best MCU villains with Kang, just because he'll be playing different variants of Kang. So it's like, 
yeah, you'll be seeing Kang in like one movie, like like this movie or even shows like Loki, but it'll be like a different variation of the character, especially in something like Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, which will be out in a couple years. But he'll be like the big bad and he's going to be like a, basically he's going to be playing like a different version of the same character, which I think is really cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of Kang in this movie and just seeing a little more like a little more of the quantum realm in Quantum Mania. I think that's going to be really neat and I hope this is a solid start to the MCU Phase 5. Going into number 9, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which is a movie I'm still looking forward to despite everything going on with DC as of right now, uh, with the whole Ezra Miller situation, which is a whole other thing, and Warner Brothers and DC deciding to scrap the entire DCEU and starting off fresh, which in my opinion is the best thing to do, which I mean with the lineup of DC's movies in 2023, I feel like they're, I feel like they're not going to be like as connected after that with like Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, which comes out at the end of the year. But even with that, I'm still hoping that these are solid standalone movies that are able to stay on their own and DC could have a solid future going forward after 2023. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm really looking forward to seeing Shazam as a character and the uh, expansion with the relationship of his family and seeing the other gods in this movie. I just hope it's a very well standalone, self-contained movie that doesn't have to rely on the future of the DCEU, which is not going to happen anymore. So looking forward to that. Coming in at number nine, we have Martin Scorsese's new film, Killers of the Flower Moon, which will be available on Apple TV Plus later this year. I am really looking forward to this movie. Martin Scorsese is one of the best directors working today. He's had a really solid track record over the past five decades. Like, he's pretty much made a standout movie with each decade. With the 70s, he yeah, had Taxi Driver, the 80s, Raging Bull, 90s, Goodfellas, the 2000s, The Departed, and then the 2010s. It's like the either The Wolf of Wall Street or The Irishman. Like, basically what I'm trying to get at, he's made a standout movie pretty much every decade, and he's kept that energy going into the 2020s. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he has in store with Killers of the Flower Moon. It's another crime epic that is based off a true story. It'll star Leonardo DiCaprio, one of Scorsese's collaborators, and another Scorsese collaborator with Robert De Niro. And it'll be the first movie with them together that, that well, that's not entirely true. They were in a movie to, together like 30 years ago or something. I can't think of the name, but this is the first movie that, we're, that they'll be starring in together that Martin Scorsese will be directing. And I think that's going to be really neat. So in terms of the movie, it's based off a book, which was based off a series of murders that took place in Oklahoma during the 1920s. It was basically this big FBI investigation. And to be honest, I'm not really too familiar with the story, but I'm looking forward to seeing how Martin Scorsese tackles the subject matter. I, I think he's just really good with the crime genre, with uh, with like everything I've seen from, from him so far. I, I think this is going to be another hit. Going into number seven, we have John Wick Chapter 4, which this franchise just continues to surprise. Ever since the first movie coming out in 2014, they have released nothing but banger after banger after banger, with each movie being crazier than the last and just showing that Keanu Reeves really is a movie star. And plus, I think that, I think that this trailer for John Wick Chapter 4 is elite. I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to expand the universe in this movie, and just seeing more of the crazy action set pieces that they have planned for it. So with that, I am really looking forward to seeing what's in store for John Wick Chapter 4 and what they got rest for the universe. Because I believe they have a TV show planned for Peacock and a spinoff movie with Ana de Armas, which will be really neat. So John Wick Chapter 4, I think is going to be amazing. And I can't wait to see it when it comes out this March. Going into number six, we got Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now, I think this movie has the potential to be really great. Uh, Indiana Jones is one of my all-time favorite characters, with the original trilogy being some of my favorite comfort movies. Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade are some of my all-time favorite movies. I think they are so much fun, both great action and characters. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have in store with this latest Indiana Jones movie, which is said to be Harrison Ford's final outing. Unlike the previous movies, this will be directed by James Mangold, who has made some of my favorite movies of the 2010s, including Logan and Ford v. Ferrari. I, I think both those movies are incredible, and I'm looking forward to seeing what his take is on an Indiana Jones movie, and seeing how he wraps up the entire series. 
And plus, watching that trailer with the iconic Indiana Jones music just hit me so hard. It it honestly gave me the chills first time I saw it. And even even watching that trailer in theaters was was on another level of wow. Like with the with the music and just everything we've seen from that trailer, I think it looks like they're gonna go out with a bang. Now I know there's some controversy around this movie because of uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which came out 15 years ago, which wasn't so stellar and the supposed plot leaks that have been going around. I'm gonna be honest with you, like I, I tend to like stay away from all that stuff with plot leaks and everything and just I just want to see the movie as is as intended. But with everything I've seen so far and with the director at hand and Harrison Ford and even with uh, Spielberg and George Lucas being executive producers, I have a lot of high hopes for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It, it even doesn't it doesn't even need to be as good as the original three i just hope it it's a it's a really solid movie and it gives us a very good conclusion to indiana jones because i think this character and harrison ford deserve a proper ending after kingdom of the crystal skull so fingers crossed i'm i'm really looking forward to this okay now we are going into my top five these are the movies where i am just I am over the moon for. And starting with number five, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This will mark the final installment in the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy and it will be James Gunn's farewell to the MCU. I have a feeling that this movie is going to be an emotional ride for me. I, I remember watching the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie back in August of 2014 and just falling in love with these characters. In a way, it's kind of like it's kind of like growing up with your old uh, with your old childhood friends through like uh let's say like middle school to high school and just seeing them all grow, grow up and eventually go in your separate ways. That's kind of how I'm feeling about this movie. And plus that, that trailer is just emotional on another level. I think, I think Rocket, I think Rocket or uh, Drax are going to bite the dust, which I don't know if I'm ready for. I'm probably going to be one of those people that's going to be like ugly sobbing in the theater, just watching this unfold. And plus, James Gunn is one of my favorite comic book movie directors, not only with his previous two Guardians movies, but even The Suicide Squad from DC, which I think is a top five DC movie, if I'm being honest. He just he just has that like energy and flavor he brings into his comic book movies, and that's what I'm going to miss the most when he leaves the MCU. He's really had an impact, not only with the characters he's introduced with the Guardians of the Galaxy, but like with his filmmaking techniques and just how he approaches comedy and character. I, I, I think that's just going to be, that's going to be, that's going to be like a, that's going to be a hole, like after Guardians 3, like once he moves on to DC. And with that, I'm very excited to see the final installment in the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy. And also a little nervous as well, because I'm not sure who's going to bite the dust or who's going to live or what, or what these characters are going to be like without James Gunn going forward. So this, this is going to be one where I go into the movie theater, probably with a bag of tissues where I'll cry my eyes out. I, I, I don't know. Like, like these characters mean so much to me and I'm just anxious to see what the conclusion is for these characters. Going on to number four, we have Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Now, if Tom Cruise is starring in a movie, you know I will be there day one. He is one of the last true movie stars. Not only how he approaches action, but his dedication to the movie theater going experience. Now, the last Mission Impossible movie, Mission Impossible Fallout, was amazing. It's one of the best action movies of the 2010s and maybe ever. Like, the ever since Ghost Protocol, they've just been, like, amping it up. And it looks like Dead Reckoning Part 1 and Dead Reckoning Part 2 will just go up even, even higher. Which, I'm just, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to top Fallout. But not only that, we just had the release of Top Gun Maverick, which was a huge success. It's by far my favorite movie of 2022 and maybe one of my all-time favorites now. Like, I've seen that movie so many times and I just love it. I am, And I'm just waiting for another movie like Top Gun Maverick to see on the big screen. And I think these next two Mission Impossible movies with Dead Reckoning Part 1 and Part 2 are going to are going to give me just that. Also Tom Cruise. He's just he is that guy. He is that guy that will just go above and beyond what is possible when it comes to action movies. And that just proves it with this with this stunt that he's going to be doing with Dead Reckoning Part 1. I still get goosebumps just thinking about the final shot in the Dead Reckoning Part 1 trailer where Tom Cruise drives 
his motorcycle all the way to the edge of the cliff while he proceeds to do a free fall, which is something he actually did. Like, well, during this, during my screening of Avatar The Way of Water and eventually online, there was this behind the scenes footage of Tom Cruise and company with director Chris, Christopher McQuarrie just getting ready for the stunt and how much preparation and time was put into this big stunt in the movie. And just, just like seeing that, all that preparation just was just like, wow, like, like, even with his age, with Tom Cruise being 60, he just refuses to stop, like, with going above and beyond, like, what is possible when it comes to action movies, and that's why I have so much respect for him, no matter, like, no matter some, like, some of his, like, personal life, like, I don't want to get into that, but, like, separating the art from the artist, like, Tom Cruise is just, like I said, he's that guy and one of the best movie stars probably of all time. I also believe that this will be another box office hit, potentially joining the $1 billion club. Like after Top Gun Maverick being a huge success and being a phenomenal movie, I think people are ready to see another Tom Cruise movie on the big screen where he does all these crazy things to immerse you into the action. And with the first teaser trailer that came out last summer with Dead Reckoning Part 1, I think it looks excellent like with all the action shots and the beautiful scenery. I, I I think it's going to be well worth the wait because this movie has kind of, it's kind of had a rough road a little bit because mainly because of COVID and the production budget going up to, I believe like $290 million, which is crazy. Like even with all that, even with some of the setbacks, I believe that Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is going to be another great installment in the Mission Impossible franchise and another win for Tom Cruise. Going into number three, we have Dune Part 2, which is a movie I've been looking forward to for at least a couple years now, ever since I saw the first Dune movie back in 2021. That movie is a visual spectacle, some of the best visual effects I've ever seen, and it's got some great characters in there too, and a really, a really cool universe as well. Uh, like, after leaving that movie back in 2021, I'm just like, that's it? Like, I want to see more out of this universe. It reminded me of something like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. Like, once those movies ended, you want, you really wanted to see the next installment. And going into Dune Part 2, I have no idea what's going to happen because I've only read the first half of, of the Dune book, which, ironically, that's what the first movie was based on. So... Going into Dune Part 2, like, I'm just looking forward to being absolutely blown away with what Denis Villeneuve has in store for this movie and the universe. I just think it's going to be another visual marvel and another, it's going to have another grand story to it as well. Like, Denis Villeneuve is one of the best directors working today, and I can't wait to see what his take is on the second half of Dune Part 2. And at the number two spot, we have Oppenheimer, which comes to us from legendary director Christopher Nolan. If you know me, Christopher Nolan is my all-time favorite director. Not only has he directed some of my all-time favorite movies, including The Dark Knight and Inception, but he's directed many other excellent movies, including Interstellar, Dunkirk, and Tenet. He just has that talent of picking a genre and putting his own twist on it. And I'm really interested to see what his take is on a biopic. We got Killian Murphy playing J. Robert Oppenheimer in his first lead role in a Christopher Nolan movie. We've seen him play supporting roles in other Nolan movies like the Dark Knight trilogy, Inception, and Dunkirk, but this is the first time that we're going to be seeing him as the main lead, and to be honest, I think that is more than well deserved. I think he is a great actor, not only like in those movies I mentioned beforehand, but even like non-Christopher Nolan movies like A Quiet Place Part 2, which I think he was really good in. We also have a big cast too, I mean not only Killian Murphy, but we got Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, Kenneth Branagh, Rami Malek, Casey Affleck, Gary Oldman, and a whole whole lot more. Like, I could just go on and on about this cast. It is stacked. We even have some names like Josh Peck, who was, of course, who played Josh in Drake and Josh. And we have the original Roderick from the Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy, which is insane. I did not expect him to appear in a Christopher Nolan movie, but here we are, and I'm looking forward to all the performances in this movie and what Christopher Nolan has to say about this time period and about this historical figure who helped create the atomic bomb during World War II. 
I think this is also a pretty neat project for Christopher Nolan because I think it fits really well with his previous movies dealing with elements of time and morality and I'm looking forward to seeing how he portrays J. Robert Oppenheimer like before the event of Hiroshima and after the event of Hiroshima because after Hiroshima he lived with massive regret with what he's created with the atomic bomb because it's like it's a it it was a it's a dangerous weapon like it could destroy like a whole city that that kind of thing I'm just I, I just can't imagine what what J. Robert Oppenheimer went through and I can't wait to see Killian Murphy's portrayal as as this historical figure. You also have Christopher Nolan being a madman when it comes to practical effects. Like, if you know the guy, he doesn't really like to use CGI. He mainly goes for practical. With this movie, he decided to recreate the first atomic bomb test without the use of CGI. I don't know how they did that. I think that is absolutely insane. Like, I remember, I remember joking about this with a group of friends. It's like, oh, what if Christopher Nolan actually used an atomic bomb or something without the use of CGI? But apparently he did it. Like, you, he is like, de he is dedicated to like filmmaking and making sure everything is realist, is as realistic as possible. And this is a movie I cannot wait to see in IMAX. Christopher Nolan plus IMAX equals a must in my book. And with that, Oppenheimer is number two on my most anticipated list of 2023. But we have another movie that, that does top that. Going in at number one, we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Now, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is not only my favorite Spider-Man movie, it's also my favorite animated movie, and it's also one of my all-time favorite movies. Like, every time I watch that movie, I just find something new to appreciate about it. Like, it's got incredible animation, but it's also got a great cast of characters with Miles Morales, Peter B. Parker, Gwen Stacy. And it's it, it's just one of those movies that just hits me emotionally, especially the uh especially the leap of faith scene that always gets to me. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what what the crew has in store for Across the Spider-Verse and also Beyond the Spider-Verse, which comes out after this. From what I'm hearing about Across the Spider-Verse, it's gonna have like six or seven different animation styles and over 200 characters. Uh, including a lot of different Spider-Man variants, which I'm really looking forward to seeing, especially uh, the Insomniac Spider-Man from the PS4 video game, along with a few other variants of Spider-Man. I just think it's going to be a really massive movie, like in, in terms of scale, but also like how they're going to push animation and also seeing Miles Morales' character progression in here as well. This is just, this is one of those movies like, like, I, I, cannot, I cannot wait for it. Like, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and Oppenheimer were fighting for number one, but the more I, the more I was thinking about it, the more I'm like, Across the Spider-Verse takes number one. I think this is going to be an, another incredible movie from Phil Lord and Chris Miller and, and another great homage to Spider-Man. And I'm looking forward to seeing what else they have to do with this universe with Miles Morales and the other Spider-Man characters. I just think it's going to be an absolute blast from start to finish. And that is why Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is my number one most anticipated movie of 2023. All right, so those were my top 10 most anticipated movies of 2023. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. And let me know what, what your most anticipated movie of 2023 is. Give me like a top five or a top 10 or whatever. Um, let's just start a conversation in the comments. Do all that. I, like, like I said, I believe 2023 is going to be one of the best years in cinematic history, and I cannot wait to see how it unfolds. With all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to give it a like rating, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot, and if you want to follow me on any other social media platforms, here's my Instagram and Twitter. They will also be in the description, and I'll also have a link to my letterbox as well if you guys want to check that out. So, anyways... I hope, you, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all on the next one. Peace.